Hi, I'm Leslie Maddox, and today I'm welcoming you into our homeschool room. I'm hoping that this video will serve as inspiration for you as you set up your own learning space. Inspiration, not imitation. What works for my family may not work for yours, but we can still all learn from and inspire each other. You may have seen our very first homeschool room. It wasn't perfect, but it was a large and beautiful space, probably the only part of that house that I was sad to leave behind when we moved. It was on the second floor, which might have been ideal for older kids, but I had very small children at the time, so the schoolroom's location on the second floor became a huge source of frustration for me. Consequently, a must-have for our new home was a ground floor schoolroom. Having a schoolroom on the main floor is a game changer for us, and I love it. Our schoolroom has glass pane French doors. We usually leave both those doors open and the large entrance makes it feel very connected to the rest of the house. But even when the doors close, the glass panes still allow the schoolroom to feel very open. Our schoolroom has a large window that brings the outside in, which was another must have for me. I found that daylight has a huge impact on our moods, especially mine. So I wanted a homeschool room that allowed the outside in rather than one that made us feel like we were in a cave. Both teaching and learning can be hard work. Homeschooling isn't always rainbows and unicorns no matter what we see on Instagram. So why not give us the added benefit of mood lifting daylight? To increase the feel of natural light, we also have daylight bulbs and the light fixtures. So our schoolroom always feels light and bright. I staunchly avoid dark colors and have chosen to use a lot of light neutral colors in our schoolroom. I like that the white reflects the light, keeping that bright and airy feel. I find that visually, I'm sensitive to too many colors in a room. Even if the colors and decor are beautiful, they just aren't restful to my nerves and I suspect that my kids may be the same way. So I like to use a lot of white to give our eyes and our minds plenty of opportunity to rest. Our school supplies and materials add pops of color. I feel that the neutral background makes the color that we do have even more delightful. Our schoolroom already had a wall of built-in shelves and cabinets when we moved into the house. It's a 20-year-old house, so the built-ins were pretty beat up, and I didn't love them, especially since the upper shelves aren't easily accessible to my short stature. We had most of the house painted when we moved in, including the built-ins. The fresh paint improved the look of the built-ins, but I didn't think to be specific with the type of paint used, so the painters used flat paint. That was a big mistake on my part, since the paint scuffs up pretty badly. A magic eraser helps a lot, but I'm not going to lie, it makes me a little angry every time I see the marks. So if you do paint surfaces that will serve as shelves or especially as work surfaces, do better than me and be thoughtful and specific about the type of paint that you use. Something else I love about our schoolroom is the wood look tile floor. Our last schoolroom was carpeted, so I had to be very careful about messy activities. And when you have preschoolers and toddlers, there are a lot of messy activities. Even activities that shouldn't be messy become messy. But I don't have to worry about messiness now. We've used paint in this room with no fear from me. I don't get stressed about markers falling on the floor. A tile floor is less comfortable than carpet, and sometimes the loudness gets to me since there are so many hard surfaces for sound to bounce from. But the ease of cleaning makes up for all of that. The size of this room, the wall of built-ins, and the large whiteboard we use does severely limit the amount of wall space, so I can't hang many posters, but I'm okay with that because I found that we didn't end up using most of the posters that I had up in our previous schoolroom. The wall items we really used were our alphabet strip and the big clock. Another must-have I had for our schoolroom was enough room for each of my kids to have their own workspaces. I found that a shared workspace like a kitchen table overly complicated our learning time and greatly lowered the enjoyment of that time for everyone involved because there were arguments about encroachment of perceived personal workspace. The obvious solution to the encroachment issue is to give each child his own desk along with drawers for storage of their personal things. With three children, I needed a learning space that would provide room for three desks large enough for them to spread out their materials. We've used IKEA desks since we began homeschooling and they have been a cost effective option for us because my kids are pretty destructive. The desks are not my favorite because I have had some issues keeping the tabletop still. I really need to get something to hold them together underneath. But they're pretty easy to clean and have a lot of drawer space, so I'm sticking with them for now. I originally had three of these desks put together. I wanted individual desks so that each kid could clearly see where his space ended and his brother's space began, avoiding encroachment and arguing. So I chose the size tabletop that was twice as long as it is wide, allowing me the flexibility of putting the desks together to make one big table. 
Putting the desks together as one big table worked great in a larger room, but it severely limited the walking around space in this smaller room. Now my boys are getting bigger by the second. So I moved my oldest to what used to be my teacher desk, allowing me to get rid of one of the IKEA desks and opening up the space. After a few months, I decided to move my workspace into the homeschool room, so I moved my younger boys' desks against a whiteboard. So I now use the whiteboard specifically for my younger boys to hang projects and for some teaching. The drawers in the drawer units are mostly personal storage space for my kids and are where they keep their crafty creations. The exception is the top drawer, which holds a drawer organizer for pencils, scissors, and such. I may eventually use them as my kids' work boxes. I'll put a link below for a video showing how I used these drawers as work boxes for my oldest last year. I saved a little spot for me between my two younger kids so that I could work with them. The drawer unit at my spot holds teacher's manuals and supplies that I use with my younger two boys. Chairs are also a key part of a workspace. I've tried several different chairs for my students to use and my younger boys are currently using sturdy and safe student chairs that I purchased on Amazon. My oldest is using my old chair from Ikea. At my workspace, I'm using the chair I got at Ashley Furniture and it's just okay. Another must have I had for a homeschool space was adequate storage with room to grow. The struggle is real when it comes to storing all the things needed for homeschooling, especially if you have younger kids that require a lot of manipulatives and hands-on activities. We can usually find nooks and crannies in our houses to put things, but I wanted the learning stuff close at hand to avoid complicating the day and wasting time by going and looking for books and supplies. Maybe the most important storage solution we have in the schoolroom is my kids' work boxes. I have separate videos, which I'll link below, about how I use these craft drawers as work boxes. My oldest was using his desk drawers as work boxes, so I had to come up with a different solution for him once I moved him to the built-in desk. I decided to use more binders since they stand on a shelf better than a regular notebook, along with magazine holders for smaller books and loose papers. The magazine holders are made of metal and very sturdy. I created cute labels out of repositionable sticker paper. I like this labeling solution because I can create custom labels and they remove cleanly. These wall pockets serve as schoolwork purgatory and hold completer work that doesn't live in one of my kids' binders. I go through the completer work at the end of the school year to select items for our portfolio. It does get pretty messy looking as the year goes on, but at least I know where everything is. These shelves live on the wall next to the doors. It holds large bins where I store curriculum that we're not currently using, as well as other supplies. The bins are great for bulky and light items, but not great for heavy items like books. I created these bin labels and am making similar labels available as a free gift to you. The link below will take you to them. These shelf units are popular for homeschool rooms, but I kind of wish it was a regular bookcase since this is a smaller room. As you can see, these shelves, which hold readers from my kindergartner and books that we'll be using for history and science this year, leave a lot of wasted room. So if you're looking for a storage solution for your learning space, I recommend sticking to regular bookshelves if you'll be using the shelves just for books. I recommend getting a unit like this one only if you want to use bins to organize and hide away random supplies. Now let's tackle the built-ins. First, let's peek into the drawers. This drawer has various writing supplies like stationary index cards, etc. We have a couple of drawers for miscellaneous school supplies. The last drawer contains our supplies for our wall calendar. And listen, I know it's a mess. Don't be jealous of my organizational skills. Now let's tackle all those shelves. Supplies we currently use on the regular are on the lower shelves. Craft supplies are on the desk level since they get the most use and so that my kindergartner can get to them easily. He loves to create. I have a printer copier on the other side of my oldest boy's workspace along with a paper organizer. I have math games and activities on one shelf and language games and activities sharing a shelf with manipulatives I give my youngest to use during vision therapy. An upper shelf holds some of our leveled books. I have to get on a chair to get to them, but I don't want my kids getting into these particular books and spreading them all over the house since we use them for school, and I want to know where they are when I need them. Portfolios and work from previous years are up at the tippy top. Our current year's portfolio is on a lower shelf. The highest shelves also hold overflow books that don't fit in my calyx bins, as well as special manipulatives that I'm saving to use with our history curriculum. Supplies that are not in constant use, but that I want to have easy access to are in the lower cabinets. 
This cabinet holds crafting and science supplies. This cabinet holds cleaning products and a old shoe organizer that I've repurposed to provide shelf space for printing supplies. I've had a large magnetic whiteboard in our schoolroom since day one and I love it. Besides using it to teach my students as a group, it has been great for spelling words and dictation, magnetic educational puzzles for a child that needs to stand and move around, displaying teaching aids and artwork, and playing with magnets. We've also had a calendar bulletin board from the start. Each year, one of my kids has the responsibility of updating the numbers on the calendar each day before doing his morning work. This year, my little kindergartner gets the job. While we do have dedicated learning spaces, we actually school all over the house. The living room, kitchen, front yard, backyard, all over. It's nice to have options, but no matter where we do school that day, the kids take their supplies back to the schoolroom at the end of the day so that we know where those things are the next day. I hope you've enjoyed visiting with us.